Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I'm so excited to share a Magic Color Slider Valentine's card with you using the Octopi My Heart stamp set from Lawn Fawn, as well as incorporating several other underwater themed stamp sets and dies to create this magic color slider in um, a different color scheme than maybe you would think for water. I definitely wanted this to have the Valentine's feel, so I went with Ballet Slippers cardstock for the base of my card. I'm gonna start by sharing the components for the Magic Color Slider. So this little tab here at the bottom of the Magic Color Slider die, this is what's going to create the pocket for the Magic Color Slider. That little tab is the front of your Magic Color Slider. So it makes it really easy to know which panel to die cut your window from. And there are three different window options. Today, of course, we're gonna use the heart because that's perfect for a Valentine's themed card. There's also the rectangle and an oval if you need a little more space for your magic color slider. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out now. Now there's a little slot at the top. This is where the magic color slider is going to slide back and forth. I'm also gonna take the Octopi My Heart stamp set and just double check that I think everything is going to work perfectly. Off camera, I die cut the track from the same Ballet Slippers cardstock, the Magic Color Slider from white, and then from the rectangle that creates the window, I die cut not only my transparency, but a piece of white cardstock for the inside of my Magic Color Slider. One thing to note about Magic Color Sliders is they really work better if you're not die cutting a bunch of elements to put inside of your card. And that is because you don't want your little track that you slide up and down to get caught on those die cut pieces. So a flat panel inside is gonna work best. Because I created my Magic Color Slider out of colored cardstock and not white cardstock, we want to put some sort of a white element inside to stamp our images and create our background scene. So I am using my Magic Color Slider. I went ahead and adhered my white cardstock inside and I am using that as my guide so I can double check with my window to make sure everything is going to be able to be visible in that heart opening. Then I am going to stamp my images and I know I'm showing the wrong ink here because I changed my mind part way through and I switched my paper out off camera, but I'm using jet black ink and that's so I can do Copic coloring. Don't use VersaFine ink with Copic coloring. If you wanted to do some Zig Clean Color Real Brush marker coloring or colored pencils, you could stick with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink, but if you're gonna do Copic coloring, I would highly recommend the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. Next, I left everything in place and I'm gonna place my clear transparency window over what I just stamped. And I'm going to stamp the window with these same images. This is where the magic comes in of the magic color slider. This window needs to line up perfectly in order to reveal the color inside. And you'll see that more in a little bit. Stays on ink is the way to go when stamping on a transparency. You don't have to worry about it rubbing off. So now that I have my inside elements, I'm ready to start coloring and creating my scene with this cute little octopus. I want to start by coloring in the background. I have found generally that the best way to add a color to the background, you could definitely mask your images and maybe do some distress inking or other kind of inking, but I generally, because it's kind of a small area, I'll just color it in with my markers. And for an underwater scene, a lot of times I will go with blues, but this is a Valentine's card. I wanted to go untraditional, and so I'm going to do pinks. My coloring, a little messy. I almost wanted it to look like um, light filtering through the water, even though this is pink water and obviously not realistic. I am using my pink markers in RV 52, 55, and 66. Definitely, when you start out, you're kind of like, it just doesn't really look that great. I like to go in with my light color, go in with my dark and mid-tone colors, and then go back with my lightest color, and I'm really blending out. Even at that, sometimes it's not gonna blend enough. The magic here is your colorless blender. So I'm gonna come back to that. I generally like to let my ink maybe dry just a little bit before finishing off that. 
and I was not terribly careful because I knew I was coloring in my octopus with some purples. These are actually blue colors, but I use them for purple. I really love these colors. These are B60, 66, and 63. And I'm gonna color him in and cover up any of that pink marker that maybe got inside of the octopus and really work on getting him colored the way I want him to look, adding detail by dotting with my markers and that kind of thing. And then I'll go back and finish off the water and really make this magical. Something I really enjoy with the Magic Color Slider is even though the image is covered up for the recipient when they first get it, you want when they open up the Magic Color Slider and pull that tab to be wowed by what they see inside. So for me, really taking the time to add that attention to detail is super important here. And with that, I'm gonna add a little shadow with a cool gray marker just to parts of my octopus to help distinguish him from the background. And then I'm gonna take my colorless blender and it does not really blend. I wish it was called a color remover instead, but it is going to move that ink out. So I'm using a combination of brush strokes and dotting and it's going to help lighten up areas. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so maybe you can see that better. And it's really gonna help with that light filtering look, the underwater type of scene that I'm creating here and adding all of these little water bubbles and little um, lighter areas and adding interest to the scene going on inside. Look how awesome that looks. And I keep double checking with my window. You definitely don't wanna do a ton of work outside of what's actually ever going to be seen. So I'm just kind of going over the whole thing, lightening up areas, and that looks awesome. Also, if any ink got inside of those bubbles, I use the colorless blender to help push it back outside because I want them to stay white. Next, I'm going to take a Sakura Stardust glitter pen, add little glitter dots to some of the water, take a black pen to the eyes, a white jelly roll pen, and add detail to the tentacles, and also some little white dots to the cheeks and the rest of the octopus, just adding lots and lots of detail, some little eyelashes with a fine tip black pen, and that is going to finish off the inside image of my card. Definitely probably the most time consuming part, was making sure that what's gonna be revealed when the, when the magic color slider slides up is amazing because it's definitely a little treat for the recipient. On the slider track, I'm going to cover both sides with 1 8 inch score tape. The track, a little tip that I find really useful is I don't want it to be any different than my color slider. So since my color slider little pocket is out of ballet slippers cardstock, I want my slider to be out of that too. If it's out of white cardstock, it's it will work fine, but from the side angle, you're gonna see white. I wanna see pink because the base of my card and the background are both in this ballet slippers color. Now I'm going to line this up really carefully all the way around with the back of my color slider. And I don't wanna remove the other side of the score tape yet. I wanna slide in my track. And I like to slide it up and down a little bit. It really helps with the movement. It's die cut perfectly to size, but I find the more you mess with that color slider piece, the better it slides. Then I'm going to, before I remove that, backing paper, we want to add the window because this is critical. If that image on the acetate window doesn't line up perfectly, it ruins the effect. So I'm gonna go around my window opening with the score tape again. And then I am going to take my acetate window and line this up and temporarily hold it in place with a little low tack tape. This is some post-it tape that I actually used for something else, I'm just tearing it in half holding that down when it just is perfectly lined up. And then I'm going to remove the backing paper from the front of my little pocket here and press that down in place to pick up the clear window because the window needs to be attached to the front of the pocket. Then I'm gonna pop that up, pull out my little post-it note pieces and it is perfectly lined up. So, so cute. So I like to always double check it again. 
before I go ahead and finish anything. And it'll quit popping out the sides once I secure that. So I can pull off my backing paper because the pocket is finished. So this is really probably the most time consuming part is putting this all together. Once you've done one, I think you get addicted to this and it is so easy to do again and again and so much fun, a fantastic interactive element. Again, I like to keep just sliding it back and forth. Um, once you have done that enough times, I think it just moves so much easier, especially in the finished card. Now I'm gonna pull that tab all the way out. And what I really like to do is add the awesome um, push here greetings from that stamp set. In this case, we're gonna do pull here. And I'm gonna stamp that with plastic flamingo ink to the little tab up at the top. So the recipient knows to pull here to, you know, see something cool. I've got my background that was created by die cutting the largest outside in stitched rectangle. And before we go any further and add any finishing little touches, I kind of had an idea where I wanted to go with this, but I really started with my window and worked my way out. And if you guys know me at all, you know that most of the time I kind of have a better idea than this, but this is a card that evolved as I worked on it. And I'm really happy with the way it evolved. I was going through a little bit of a slump at the time and it was really therapeutic to just kind of play and play with color and do something non-traditional and it ended up really breaking me out of the funk. So don't be afraid to just kind of play around with your supplies, try new things. It's very, very fun and it's definitely what card making should be. I am using the Ocean Wave accents to add those ocean details to my background. I've done this before. Um, I really, really like this look. So another idea if you're kind of in a slump is to maybe revisit something you've done in the past and you liked. I knew I liked this. So I tried it out and I thought it was really, it was going to work great for this. It helps with that underwater um, theme, I think, a lot too. I tried to really just keep the waves around the edges of the card. There are no, there's no need to put any underneath where your pocket's going to go. It's kind of a, a waste of time. Some of them definitely are going to be. There's no way around that. But um, for the most part, I just kind of tried to keep them around the edges. I'm using post-it tape to hold them in place and run them through my die cutting machine. Then I want to ink up the edges. I find that it just brings more depth and dimension to the design. Keeping with my pink love type theme, I'm going with picked raspberry ink on this ballet slippers cardstock, just gently rubbing the ink all the way around the edges. And that is gonna kind of finish off what my background or how I want my background to look. I want to ink the edges of my pocket as well so that it blends in better with the rest of my card. So from here, I went and grabbed the Mermaid For You images, um, fossil images and things, uh, seaweed, all of those, those solid images. And I'm gonna stamp these with ballet slippers, plastic flamingo and lobster inks. Again, going non-traditional in my color choices so that everything blends together for a very love feel, love feeling underwater ocean scene card. Then I wanna die cut those with the coordinating dies. I'm going to stamp fish, a seahorse from Mermaid For You, another little fish from the Dunna stamp set, that little, the mini stamp set that has the shark. Um, some of these underwater stamp sets are just my very favorite ever. I love them. I think they're so much fun to mix and match. Then there's the large heart from the Octopi My Heart stamp set. We're going to stamp that as well. And then start coloring in all of those images with Copic markers to kind of match what I've already done. Now I was really anxious to see how my little seaweed and fossil pieces were going to work on my card. So I die cut these first and then I'm gonna come back and stamp all of those other images I was talking about with the jet black ink so I can color those in with Copic markers and die cut those and add them to my background. 
So let I like to keep checking back and forth as I'm working. It gives you a good idea of how many pieces you need and things like that. Plus, I need to find a creative way to add my greeting. I originally thought I would stamp it directly on that pocket underneath the heart opening, but I'm rethinking that as I've laid out my fossil pieces. I'm not sure that it's going to draw the attention that I want it to. So instead of stamping it directly on the pocket and potentially messing up the design, which I have been known to do and I don't wanna remake that pocket, I decided it would be best to stamp it on a separate piece of paper. I've die cut a fancy folded banner from Vellum and I'm going to stamp the sentiment from Octopi My Heart on this banner doing some two-tone embossing. So starting with the word that I want stamped and embossed in red, I am going to stamp Octopi with Versamark and heat emboss with red embossing powder. Once this is heat embossed, I will add the rest of the sentiment around that word and stamp that with Versamark ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. This is a great way to draw your eye in and emphasize one word of the sentiment. I haven't done a two-tone greeting like this in quite some time and it just really um, reminded me of something I, I like a lot. Plus, another thing that I do a lot because I think it's a great way to add a sentiment to a card design is stamping on vellum and adding the vellum piece to your card. You can still see what's going on underneath, but it draws your attention to the sentiment as well. So this vellum banner is gonna kinda of just sit below the heart window, and there's gonna be like a little school of fish around it and some hearts and other little things, but it's still a prominent piece of the card. It's very easy to read. And it's just a great, cute little piece. I really, really like this. And it's got those great little score lines on it. So it's gonna be easy to fold and place right there on the card. So once I have that heat set, which the heat does warp the vellum a little bit, which for this, I want it to kind of pop up and have that natural um, little arc to it. So it works really great. I'm carefully, carefully bending it along those score lines. And I'm not gonna attach anything quite yet. I like to wait until I have all of the elements most of the time, just in case I change my mind. I don't wanna have to pull it off and ruin the card. So this is gonna be a great time to stamp all those other elements, get those colored in, get those die cut, laid out where I want them to go, and then I can start attaching everything to my card. The school of fish and the small fish are colored with RV 52, 55, and 66. The little purple fish and the seahorse are gonna be B60, 63, and 66. And my hearts for that pop of red is gonna be R27 and R46. So the hearts and one of the pieces of coral down along the bottom are the nice little pops of red in the card design. Everything else is kind of in pinks and purples keeping it to that more love feeling. Grab all of my little dies now from Dunna, Mermaid For You, and Octopi My Heart. Lawn Fawn has the best names for their stamp sets and inks and things. I just think they're so clever and cute. And then go ahead and die cut everything, lay it all out, make sure I like how it's all gonna look, and then we can start attaching all of these little finishing pieces to finish off this magic color slider card. Now before I attach the magic color slider to the card, there's gonna be a couple of elements that are gonna be tucked behind it a little bit. So I did go ahead and attach those. Plus I've got my coral and things along the bottom. We're gonna have the a couple of little glue dots on both ends of the banner. We're gonna leave the center of the banner open so that it kind of has that natural little arc to it, and it's only gonna be attached underneath where it folds. It also kind of helps disguise the um, adhesive this way, and we can attach the pocket as soon as we have that part done, or anything that's gonna be tucked under it. And then I'm using a combination of glue dots 
and glossy accents to attach the elements. It really just kind of depends on the element. The seaweed, for example, overlaps that pocket, which is popped up a little bit. And I felt like a stronger adhesive like Glossy Accents or the Ranger Multi Matte Medium would hold that in place better. And anything kind of small was attached with liquid adhesive rather than a glue dot. Here's all those final little pieces. The last thing we're gonna do is take the Jet Black ink and take the little heart and the water bubbles from Octopi My Heart and stamp directly on the card itself. This is gonna kind of round out, that's gonna give you the smaller hearts, give some additional bubbles to some of the fish, the little seahorse, color in all of those hearts with my darkest red marker, R46. Then we'll go over the bubbles on the window with glossy accents, the hearts are all covered with glossy accents, and the bubbles are covered with Nouveau Crystal Drops in Simply White to really make those stand out on that pink background. I'll let everything sit and dry completely, and when you're done, this is what the card looks like. And when you pull the little pull here tab, you get to see the awesome magic color slider and see that little octopus come to life. Thanks for joining me today for this interactive magic color slider card featuring awesome Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. For more information on this card, please visit the Lawn Fawn blog. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. Oh, 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 oh,